This is Grade 3, Module 4, Lesson 10. And in this lesson, we're actually going to formalize that distributive property as a tool, as a, as a tool for finding the total area of a large rectangle. Now, teachers, the reason why we want to go through the efforts of teaching the distributive property is <clears throat> because our third graders, we want our third graders to master all of their multiplication facts by the end of third grade. And some of those bigger multiplication facts, particularly, you know, like 8 times 7 or 6 times 9, um, these bigger multiplication facts, we can help students um, get access to these big ones by using the distributive property to break these down into smaller, easier multiplication facts that the students would then add together in order to get 8 times 7 is 56 or 6 times 9 is 54. <clears throat> For example, let's say I've got a rectangle and, oh, let's make it, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right, so there is my rectangle. Okay, so clearly, this is a rectangle that is 8 by 6, and we know that 8 times 6 equals, and that would tell us the number of um, squares inside this rectangle. That would tell us the area of this rectangle. But 8 times 6 might be a little bit big for your students, so what we are going to be using this lesson for is to show them that they can take this large rectangle and cut it into two smaller rectangles. For example, this right here. And now I've cut it into two smaller rectangles. And in this case, I cut it up into a 5 by 6 rectangle and a 3 by 6 rectangle. So instead of doing 8 times 6 and getting the answer all at once, I could take that rectangle and change it into 5 times 6 plus 3 times 6. And of course we want the students to see that 5 plus 3 is 8 because we took the original 8 and cut it up into two smaller pieces. And they don't have to necessarily be equal, like 4 and 4. We could do 5 and 3. And then the idea would be uh, students can then solve the problem. Well, 5 times 6 is 30, so that means this big rectangle up here has 30, an area of 30. And then this lower rectangle down here has an area of 18, because 3 times 6 is 18. And then we add those together, and we get 48. Therefore, 8 times 6 is 48. And we don't have to chop it up in, the, in up and down. What we could do is we could have taken that original 8 by 6. Let's do that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And here's our original 8 by 6 rectangle. Here's 8 by 6. And instead of cutting it down here horizontally, we could cut it vertically. I can cut it, oh, let's cut it right here if I wanted to. So I will cut that and we'll make it like this. So now, instead of it being 8 times 6, which of course we know is 48, but um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we've turned it into two smaller rectangles. In this case, this rectangle here is 8 by 4. And I want to change that to, oh, let's do blue. 8 times 8 by 4. And that this rectangle here is 8 by 2. So our new equation over here would be 8 times 4 plus 8 times 2. 8 times 4 gives us this green rectangle, 
and 8 times 2 gives us this light blue rectangle. And of course, we should see that, oh, 4 plus 2 equals 6. All right. And then we can do our math. 8 times 4 is 32. 8 times 2 is 16. And add those together, and we get 48. So that means 8 times 6 is 48. So that's going to be the whole point of Lesson 10, where we're going to be using the distributive property to find the total area of a large rectangle. But really, the point of this is to help kids access the times tables when they, the factors get bigger. So let's practice. So we've got um, label the side lengths of the shaded and unshaded rectangles. Then find the total area of the large rectangle by adding the areas of the two smaller rectangles. So that's basically what I just previously showed you on those previous two slides. So we have a big, huge rectangle. And in this case, the big, huge rectangle, it doesn't say so, is a 9 by 8. So this huge thing is 9 by 8. And what they've done is they've chopped it off right here into 5 and 4. All right. So down here, our 9 by 8 has been broken up into 5 plus 4 times 8. So they took the 9 and they chopped it up into 5 plus 4. So this rectangle up here is 5 by 8, or 5 times 8. And that's why it says right here. And then this lower rectangle down here is 4 times 8. And that's why it says that right here. And then we fill in the blanks. 5 times 8 is 40. 4 times 8 is 32. So 40 plus 32 is 72. And so we know that the area of this big, huge rectangle is 72 because this rectangle was 40, this rectangle is 32, and combined, the area is 72. All right, let's practice another one uh, over here. We've got this rectangle here, and we see that this is 5, and this is 2, so let's do some counting here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is 10. So that means the entire length is 12. And sure enough, that's why we have a 12 over here. So now we can start filling in our blanks. This blank is going to be a 10. That's because we know the whole side is 12. That's why it says 12 here. But that 12 was broken up into 10 plus 2. 10 plus 2. And now we have two smaller rectangles. So this rectangle here is 10 times 5. And then this rectangle down here is 2 times 5, and we already have it right here. And now 10 times 5, this piece way up here, and I'm going to do that in green, has an area of 50, because 10 times 5 is 50. And this rectangle down here has an area of 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. And sure enough, that's what it says right here. 2 times 5 is 10. And then we add these together, 50 plus 10, and so we know that our total area is 60 square units. And I chose this problem because this problem is different because it chops it up this way instead of horizontally, vertically instead of horizontally. Um, so we see the problem down here. It says 7 times 13. And we can see that these are 3 right here, so I'm going to put in a 3. So this piece way over here is probably going to be 10, but let's count to make sure. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So sure enough, this piece was a 10. So what they did was they took our 13 and they changed our 13 into 10 plus 3. So I'm going to squeeze that in there, 10 plus 3. So now we have two rectangles. We've got this rectangle right here, and this rectangle is 7 
times 10, or 7 by 10. And so we're going to put that right here. 7 times 10 is our first rectangle. And then this rectangle is 7 times 3. 7 times 3. And sure enough, that's why it says 7 times 3 here. So now we're going to find the area of those two rectangles. And so this first rectangle right here, 7 times 10, has an area of 70. So I'm going to put in 70 here. And then this rectangle right here has an area of 21 because 7 times 3 is 21. 7 times 3 is 21. And now how do we find the area of the big rectangle? We add up the areas of the two smaller rectangles. So 70 plus 21 gives us 91. And so the area is 91 square units. So in this problem, Finn imagines one more row of 9 to find the total area of a 9 by 9 rectangle. Explain how this could help him solve 9 times 9. So I chose this problem because it's kind of a little confusing and it doesn't really show this in the teacher notes or... Um, so I thought I would really talk about this one. So he starts off wanting to know 9 times 9. Okay, that's the whole point. But instead, what he does is he imagines this to be a 10 by 9, all right? So he starts with 10 times 9. But then, really, what he did was he included this extra row down here. So the whole thing, the whole thing is 10 times 9 which is 90, but he included this extra row down here that we, he wasn't really supposed to include, and that's a 1 by 9 rectangle. So that's a 1 by 9 rectangle, which is 9. So we need to subtract 90 and 9. So 90, take away 9, gives us 81. And so 9 times 9 is 81 because that's really this whole rectangle, this whole rectangle which is 90, but take away this extra one down here which is 9 and that gives us 81. So a proper, more proper way of writing that would be um, we could say 9 times 9 is 10 times 9 take away 1 times 9. And that's a, that's a more proper way of writing it. And sure enough, 90 minus 9 gives us 81, which is exactly what 9 times 9 is. So that's a little tricky one. And so that wraps up third grade module for lesson 10, where we're really using that distributive property to take a large rectangle and break it in, breaking it up into the sum of two smaller rectangles.